Today, we are going to create not one, but two Christmas cards using Strathmore watercolor cards, stencils, acrylic paint, and napkins. I'm using this penguin ball napkin for the first one. And the, all the napkins that I'm using come from ninniesnapkins.com. There's a discount code and affiliate link in the description box so you can check it out. So first off, I am cutting out the focal image. Now, I haven't taken the plies off of this. I've left them on. It makes it easier to cut out. This one's really easy to cut out. It's straight edged. So I'm not going to water cut it, but I will have to remove those excess two plies. So I'm trying this out on a seven by 10 mixed media art journal page and the Strathmore card. And that's what I'm going to do first. So I am taping this down onto some foam core and I'm taping it so that I get a white border around the card. I like that framed look. Now I'm deciding, am I going to go portrait or landscape with my composition? And the reason I want to decide now is I am not going to put paint or as much paint where the penguin and the focal image are. I want that to be white underneath. Now there's a little bit of teal on the Christmas ball. So I'm going to go with colors that work. So I'm using alizarin crimson and blue green from Amsterdam, which reads teal like. And I'm mixing it on the watercolor page, wet on wet. Now when you put paint, acrylic paint on the watercolor, it, it goes in very quickly, almost dry like. So blendability isn't necessarily there. You can add more as you go, but you get that soft cloudy look and I really like it. So I'm trying where the penguin is going to go because I don't want to put paint where I don't need paint. And here I'm just adding more alizarin crimson to build up the pink color. Not too worried about it being splotchy at this point because I am going to be coming in and doing some stenciling and stamping on this and that's going to push it back. Here I'm adding a little bit of white gesso just to soften it and change the tone a little bit. I like lots of different tones. I think that adds interest to your background. Because this is watercolor paper, not just cardstock, it takes the wet medium really well. Here I'm using the Stampendous dot stamp and I'm stamping with acrylic paint. Didn't like how that went on, so I'm going to attempt to get a better impression. And since I want the background to be a wintry scene, I'm putting the white balls, the white dots. This one is a great general stamp that you will get your value out of. This stencil is called Star, Star Flower Net. And again, it looks like snowflake. So I'm just doing that one little motif with white acrylic paint. I wanted to add a little bit black because the penguin has black. So I chose this medieval music stencil and I'm using black archival with this blending brush. It's a very fine stencil and I find this is the best way to get a good impression. It's not as dark black as I would like, but it does add subtle interest to my background. You can see how well that looks. Now I'm just whiting out the area right behind the penguin with white acrylic paint because I don't want to see the pattern come through the penguin's head. I 
I could have glued the penguin down onto paper to keep that from happening, but this is an alternative. In the next card, you're going to see me do the other option. So there's always way, two ways of doing it. I wanted a little bit more black contrast, so I grab this star shower stencil again from the crafters workshop and I will put the names and the links in the description box below and I'm picking small scale stencils and stamping and you get a lot of interest we have the medieval music the star flower net the stars and the dots lots of layering and that's what makes for an interesting background the black here is a little bit bolder than I'd like but I take care of that later on I'm removing the tape at this point because I'm ready to glue my focal image on and as I test out the positioning I notice there's gold in the ball and I'm thinking you know what I'm going to do some splatters with gold to bring that color up into the top part this makes it cohesive and works together now if I was doing lots of these I would ha do it kind of assembly line so I would splatter four of them and you can make four of the penguin cards with one napkin, which is good value for your money. Just adding a little bit more white because I could tell that I could see some of the patterning come through the penguin's head. And now I'm gluing the penguin down with my fluid mat medium. I lift up one half, glue it down, put some on top, and you know as always the napkin gets very fragile when you wet it so you have to be gentle now you'll note that there is some blue and pink showing through the penguins head I'm going to take care of that once this is completely dry I'm cutting off the excess loving how this is coming together so here I'm just taking white gesso and painting it over top of where I don't want to see the patterning and you can see that just pushes it back and gets rid of it it also makes this look like it's been painted on not just a napkin that you've glued on or something that you've just glued on top And there was some on here over here. Now, if you don't want to paint this out, it didn't look horrible as it was. Now I'm just adding a little bit of black. Again, I'm just making it look a little bit more like it was something I painted. So I'm adding black and then I'm shading to make the focal image stand out from the background. And then I'm sh shading around the outside edge as well. And I think this really adds to it. You could have used a Posca marker and traced around it if you wished. It's just another way to do it. it, gives a slightly different look. And then I'm shading on the outside. Now the teal that was on the napkin was very faded and I wanted to deepen it so I'm using the same blue green that I used on the top part of the card and watering it down and then painting it to brighten it up and make everything work together. I toyed with the idea of adding some pink, some of the lizard and crimson on the ball and I chose not to. 
Now I'm using my wooden blocks to stamp with black acrylic paint. I like using paint instead because if you make a mistake like you just saw me do, you can remove it with a baby wipe because everything underneath it is permanent and perfectly dry. And I'm just stamping the word peace. Because I wanted this a little bit darker than what I, what I got, I'm just using my Posca pen to add more. And other times you've seen me go in with my liner brush and black paint. Again, two ways to do the same thing. So let's move on to the next card. This one is using the napkin called Deer Baubles. And you can see the balls hanging from the deer. So I've cut it out. And this time I, I decide to use the water cutting technique. Although I do change my mind to get a little bit more exact later on. I just use water on the with a liner brush and go around. You need it very little water. Now the ball ripped there, but don't worry, I can paint that in later, and that's what you'll see me doing. So because I want to get rid of the excess brown that's around the antlers, and that's too hard to do with water cutting, I'm gluing this down on paper, and once it's dry, it'll allow me to fussy cut this out. So I'm debating between these two stencils for the background. And I decide to go with the Art Deco leaves because it reminds me of evergreen and very Christmassy. So I'm putting some background color and I'm using Hooker's Green, which is the dark green, and Yellow Green, the light one. And I'm mixing it right on the watercolor card. And again, this goes on so nicely, so quickly, and it's almost instantly dry. So it's a very speedy process. Without a doubt, I could do four of these cards in a very, very short time. And again, there are four of the reindeer's heads on here. So I could do them easily. I tried that blue-green, wasn't quite the right shade, switched it up to Prussian blue. I love Prussian blue with the green. Quick peek to see that it's giving me what I want. Then I'm going to move the stencil and line it up and continue for the rest of the card. At this point I'm thinking it got a little darker than I first wanted it to. Now that this is completely dry, I am fussy cutting it out. Now, I put glued it onto the paper, one, to be able to fussy cut all the parts that I didn't want, but also we have a very dark background here, and it would be really hard to paint the white out for the antlers. So gluing it on paper keeps the colors of the napkin true. So once that's cut out, I'm gluing everything down with my gel medium. Now, the letters that spell out joy, or the J and the Y, I just printed and made a very large font and cut it out. This is just copy paper that was printed black. I didn't even need to paint it black. So you can do this with anything, a snowman in the middle, a snow globe, a Christmas ball, a Christmas light, anything that vaguely resembles an O. Now remember that ball I had ripped? This one's green, but it's not showing up, so I'm just painting it red, as I will the other one. I wanted them red because the red's really showing up on this card. 
I could have added some balls. I actually, the one at the top, I've moved. It was kind of lower down, and it would be under the Y, so I wanted to see it. Now, because I thought this got dark, I thought I'm going to add some brightness and lightness by tracing the black letters with the white Posca pen. And this makes such a difference. I could have painted these letters red if I wanted. That would give a different look on the card. And if you were making multiples, you could switch it up and change certain colors and make the same but different. Just adding a few brightness. Now I'm adding a little bit of white to brighten up my focal image. Remember I said the background was dark, so I'm just lightening this up, adding a few highlights, if you will. And then I come in with some black and brown to shade and to deepen the color. Basically, I'm just tweaking what's there to make it more my own and to make it stand out on my page. Adding some shading around the baubles. I do come in and I add some white highlighting as well, but I don't think that was on camera. And then I decide to use my stylus dipping into red paint. And I'm making some interest on the letters. And that ties into the red balls and makes everything work together. Grab my black Posca pen and I'm sketching around my deer just to add a little bit more detail. You could do the same with a charcoal pencil, but that would move if you were touching it. And I don't want to make have that happen with a card, so I'm using all permanent products. And then I'm just outlining around the edge of the card just to give it a little bit of a border. Please check out my play Christmas playlist. There's lots of Christmas projects, other Christmas cards to give you ideas about what you can create for this Christmas or next. Or use the same techniques for Easter cards or cards for no reason. Here I'm using my black archival ink and a blending foam and just edging it all in black. Just add one more little detail to frame the card. The nice thing about this card is you can take the, the owner, the, the person who receives it, can take it out and put it into a 4x6 frame. So there's card number one and card number two. Close-up pictures come. If you like my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Collect, click on the bell so you will be notified of upcoming videos. And until next time, go get creative.